we've always had issues with the Secret Service. In my view, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a disaster uh, organizationally and bureaucratically. And uh, it's terribly political in, in hiding records from the American people uh, for political reasons. And we're seeing that again in the case of Hunter Biden. Uh, I find it very curious uh, and ironic to see the left hysteria and reaction to the Secret Service allegedly failing to maintain text messages um, around the time of January 6. Now this process of failing to maintain or inform law enforcement or uh, in the case of the uh, Congress, Congress itself who wanted to see these text messages allegedly uh, is just par for the course from the deep state, isn't it? And uh, the left is outraged that text messages could have been erased, uh, but I don't recall that outrage when Judicial Watch highlighted and exposed how phones were wiped by the Mueller operation, how we exposed how the FBI was allowing text messages to be destroyed. Uh, they didn't care because we were asking about text messages uh, that would have um, in, uh, 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 potentially hurt their effort to destroy Trump. So now we're expected to believe that uh, things that the government has been doing for years all of a sudden uh, is a, the worst scandal in American history because uh, it, it relates to January 6. Uh, but the Secret Service, uh, which is in part responsible for these records, uh, you know, we've always had issues with the Secret Service. In my view, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a disaster organizationally and bureaucratically and uh, it's terribly political in, in hiding records from the American people uh, for political reasons and we're seeing that again in the case of Hunter Biden. In June 2020 Judicial Watch uncovered that uh, Hunter Biden was uh, visiting all over the world 29 different countries including trips to Russia, five trips to China, and the reason we found out about those trips specifically and uncovered them exclusively is because we knew what to ask and who to ask, namely the Secret Service that was providing protection for Hunter Biden. And they have rec recordations of where they go with him. What was interesting is that Biden, Hunter Biden, during the second half of the second term of the Obama-Biden administration, uh, the record stopped, meaning that he presumably stopped getting Secret Service protection, presumably by choice. So isn't that interesting? Now, now that he is the son of a sitting president, he obviously is getting Secret Service protection. And so similarly, we want records about this protection. And of course, the, the Secret Service, unfortunately par for the course, is stonewalling and refusing to produce records to us. We specifically asked for all records concerning the use of security and other services to Hunter Biden and any other companions, all records concerning the use of government funds to provide security, and any other uh, services to Hunter Biden and any companions. And uh, we had three separate FOIA requests. Uh, some of the requests, uh, well, at least one of the requests, actually go back to some of the Secret Service protection he was getting during the Biden administration. We wanted more information for a broader period of time. Other requests, the other requests relate to his uh, what the Secret Service has been doing to him, doing for him now, uh, specifically, uh, you know, where, where, where they're providing protection, where he's going, that's what the records presumably would show, and of course the cost of providing him protection uh, for his, uh, his home in Malibu. Now, we obviously don't want the, uh, the secret sauce uh, records about how the Secret Service is, uh, provides protection. You know, that's not what we uh, ask for. Uh, we just want the basic records uh, detailing what the Secret Service is doing in terms of costs and such uh, that provides us insight as to you know, where he's going and how much money we're spending on it. Fundamental basic records that typically we're able to get or should be able to get under law. But the Secret Service has decided to protect Hunter Biden here. And I say that because we get other records, for instance, about Joe Biden's travel without much trouble, trouble from the Secret Service. So why are they protecting Hunter? Well, you know why they're protecting Hunter. 
You know why. At least that's the conclusion I draw from this unusual obstruction by the Secret Service. So Judicial Watch has sued in federal court. And so this isn't just a matter of complaining. Judicial Watch acts. And that's what separates Judicial Watch, frankly, from the political class. The political class likes to complain and kvetch. Uh, but what Judicial Watch does is say, we know what to do. We ask for the records. And if they're unwilling to give us the records and we have the capacity, because sometimes we don't, because we have thousands of Freedom of Information Act requests pending, uh, we sue. And in this case, the Secret Service is stonewalling us not on one, but two, but three Freedom of Information Act requests related to Hunter. So the other news this week as it relates to Hunter, which I'll bring up as because this is part, of the, part and partial of that, because to me, this is a window on Hunter corruption. Where you, if you know where he's been and where he's going, uh, where he's been traveling, that gives you some insight as to potential corruption issues. That's why one of the reasons we asked for the transparency law to be enforced here. Uh, Fox News uh, reported that it's a make or break period for the Justice Department in terms of deciding whether to prosecute Hunter Biden on a number of issues related to uh, his international schemes uh, to get money, trading on his father's name and converting his father's public office into private gain for him and his business partners. Of course, there are other issues related potentially to drug use, uh, tax cheating. Uh, speaking of the Secret Service, there are allegations the Secret Service swooped in to try to help him uh, in terms of uh, a gun issue where a gun was lost and the Secret Service showed up to try to clean up the mess. Uh, so there's potentially also a charge related to uh, his uh, evidently lying on the federal background check form for a gun purchase about his drug use. Easy, straightforward prosecution if the Justice Department decided to pursue it. But all I need to tell you is that they've had the Hunter laptop since 2019, and they've been protecting him ever since. Now, Je Attorney General Garland says, oh, no, he trusts the U.S. attorney in Delaware, the Biden's home state, uh, to fairly prosecute this. Well, we already know there have been stonewalling and delays, so we already know that's an issue. And secondly, the Justice Department regulations that were um, thrown in our faces repeatedly uh, require that a special counsel be appointed uh, when there's a conflict of interest by the Justice Department. Now, of course, there's a conflict of interest by the Justice Department in figuring out whether to prosecute Hunter Biden. And ob that is obvious because he's the son of the president who appointed these folks. But the other conflict of interest that the media uh, and, and doesn't want to focus on, and one of the reasons I think the Justice Department is uh, probably going to do, if they do anything against Hunter, something very narrow that allows him to get off in a way that no other citizen would be allowed uh, to do, uh, is because of the involvement of his father in these alleged crimes. You have this Hunter laptop scandal showing, uh, the, the Hunter laptop material showing that, uh, and other records and evidence, including uh, witness statements, uh, showing that Hunter Biden was in a business relationship with his father, and that the money he was getting was going in part to his father. And you have other information showing that his father's vice president's office was being used as part of this business operation. Frankly, it's called, it, it, you know, it's a mafia. It's usually, it's been typically used to go after the mafia. It, it, it has all the hallmarks of a racketeering operation, RICO, racketeering influence and corrupt organizations. So uh, the, the challenge, and I'm being charitable because uh, this is, uh, the Justice Department knows what the challenge is, is that it's not just about Hunter, it's about Joe. And the fact that a special counsel hasn't been appointed is a scandal. And in my view, the decision whether to prosecute Hunter Biden can't be made by regular Justice Department political appointees. Now, let me be clear. I'm no fan of the special counsel regulation, but it's there. And we're supposed to follow it, right, at the Justice Department. If the Justice Department thinks, no, look, the politically accountable person is the attorney general. He's the one who makes the decision. That's where the buck stops. And he's not going to outsource it to a special government employee who isn't confirmed by the Senate. But that's not what the rule is. That's what we were told wasn't the rule under Trump. I objected to special counsels under Trump. 
But no, they had Mueller. And now we're told that we don't need special counsels for Biden, even though the circumstances require it. Now, Judicial Watch, and I encourage you to sign up our petition on change.org. Maybe we can provide a link to it. We have over 350,000 people signed a petition for the special counsel for Biden. Frankly, Biden family corruption, because it's not only Hunter, it's his uh, brothers as well, Joe Biden's brothers, who seemingly are involved in this racketeering operation. So how is it this is supposed to be investigated? Now, the, the other challenge for the Justice Department, which is a legitimate constitutional challenge, is whether the Justice Department can prosecute a sitting president. Well, this is where the impeachment power comes. If there are issues related, uh, if the Justice Department finds information about um, criminality by the president, obviously the House and the Senate can move to remove him. And then there can be prosecutions. That was the whole thinking behind Trump. They wanted to remove him so they could try to jail him, even though he hadn't done anything wrong. Here you've got significant ev evidence of criminal activity, and they don't want to do anything by the Justice Department. So again, this goes back to the double standards for justice. And I, you know, I say, uh, I often I, a joke, I guess it's not a joke, it's not double standard. Oh no, it's one standard. The one standard is target conservatives or Republicans or anyone else, because it include, includes Democrats from time to time, who are enemies of the establishment. Uh, and whether they've done anything wrong, it doesn't matter. They don't make decisions based on rule of law. They make decisions based on politics while protecting people like Obama, Biden, and Hillary and all the rest, Strzok, Page, and people like that. It's one standard. Protect your friends and punish your enemies. To paraphrase Obama's statement in that regard. So that's what's going on with Biden. And at least, you know, Judicial Watch, to be clear, can't prosecute someone. But we can uncover documents suggesting ways and, via, and, and pathways for investigators. Or prosecutors, if there were any honest ones out there. And of course... The documents educate you about what needs to be done so you can tell your elected officials what you think. So at this point, we're probably doing more honest investigations. And frankly, there are other good people doing some honest investigations there, too. And I don't want to uh, deny that there are other folks interested in these issues. And then the Justice Department. You know, I think what they're doing, you know, our experience is anything they do it's almost always reaction to public disclosures. So let's say there's a leak of the laptop saying that Hunter Biden was involved in sex trafficking on an international level, implicating his father, which is what happened. Uh, and so the Justice Department would never have wanted to look at that outright because they, they saw it on, the, on, on uh, they had access to the same materials, practically speaking, or could have. So what they do is they quickly start to pretend to investigate it. I mean, we saw that during the Hillary Clinton email scandal. They were literally following our lead because they didn't want to be embarrassed that Judicial Watch was questioning and investigating and uncovering information and evidence that they didn't. So they were using literally our evidence or started to question people once we announced we were going to question people. That's what I'm convinced is happening with Biden. A lot of this is, oh, we've done an investigation we're probably going to have the narrowest possible prosecution, if any. Maybe there'll just be a plea deal. So I don't trust what's going to happen here. Uh, and all we can do, in my view, again, is pressure uh, Congress to demand accountability here because they have unique ability to do it, uh, to do that based on funding. And secondly, uh, demand accountability from the Justice Department. So if the Congress won't provide leadership, you can provide leadership by uh, A, supporting Judicial Watch, getting the word out about the corruption that not only implicates Hunter, but his father. Remember, these are, these are potentially dangerous scandals in the sense they have a national security impact with respect to China, Ukraine, and Russia, including other countries. I didn't know, for instance, uh, some of the materials that have been released recently, I don't know if they were hacked or not, or I forget, uh, but it looks like it's credible material, 
uh, implicating Romania. There was a Romania angle. So uh, who knows how many countries are involved? But obviously, when you have uh, the president and his son compromised by illicit dealings with foreign governments and fronts for foreign governments, obviously that's a national security issue. Lies are at risk as a result of the Biden scandals, and uh, we deserve and demand, and demand full accountability. And so Judicial Watch has a number of lawsuits in this regard, with the latest lawsuit against the Secret Service uh, for details on Hunter Biden and his travel uh, is just the latest. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.